birthright and the blessings of Abraham uh, came into Europe and stayed there and, and came all the way here to America with the same, primarily the same group of people. Now, that's not to say that uh, other na- again, that other nations aren't welcome in. We see that in Revelation chapter 22, I think it is, New Jerusalem. You've got uh, the 12 gates with, uh, I think there was, I'm trying to remember if there was the walls or the gates. But anyways, the, 12, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel were around that city. So it's very, Israel is still very much uh, a part of God's plan, that nation. It is the hub, if you would, of the gospel. Uh, uh, so, well, Jesus said it in many other ways. He said, you are the light of the world, a city upon a hill. And when he was given that lecture, he wasn't talking to Gentiles at that time, believe it or not. Matthew chapter 5 was given to Israelites that were sitting there at, the, at his feet listening to that sermon. Um, um, you know, and this is why, and, and, I, I, and this, this lecture must just sound crazy to some people, but this is why many people refer to Christianity as the white man's religion. Because, and it's why some people reject it. And they're rejecting it based off of their pride of race. What they're saying is, well, let's just, there's this black Israelite movement. They, they say that Christianity was a white man's religion and they try to say they're the true Israelites and yet they don't even believe anything about Christianity. But in other words, they, they reject Christianity and they get people to not want to be a part of Christianity because they say that it came from the white man. And that Jesus, since Jesus was a white man, we can't follow that religion. Well, who's the one with the racial pride then? Is it the people that were chosen by God to be a servant to the other nations? Or the people that say, it's not fair, uh, it's not fair, that should be for me. Okay? You know, when you, when you look at it from that aspect, you know, I'll say this too, there are also uh, people of Caucasian origin or Israelite origin that... Uh, would get prideful because of this. And Jesus addressed those types of people in John chapter 8. Um, well, first, the, uh, John the Baptist did. He said to these people that boasted to be of Abraham's seed, he said, God can raise up stones to become children of Abraham. In other words, it's not your racial superiority that's giving you these things. You inherited something, and we're going to talk about it. You inherited a, birth, a special birthright, but it's not because you're so great. It's because of the, uh, the purposes and the plans of God, okay? So you can definitely take this message the wrong way and then think that since you're a white person, you're great and you're powerful and superior. That's not at all what, what the Scripture is saying. Um, anyways, all right. I'll say I'll, I'll got a couple more points to make here, and we'll get on to the next Scriptures. Uh, Just as the tribes of Israel were chosen to carry forth the light of truth to the nations in the Old Testament, no doubt God has has chosen the Caucasian tribes of the world to carry forth the gospel of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. The concept of a chosen nation is not merely an Old Testament thing, as many like to say. It continues on in the New Testament as well. And there are are many different examples of that. Uh, When Peter was speaking to the Israelites, he said, but you are a chosen generation. This is in 1 Peter chapter 2.9. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read one verse here. But you are a chosen generation. That word generation is, means a race of people. You're a chosen race of people. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now notice, they were to be a blessing unto the world, to be a priest nation unto the world. They weren't to lord it over other people and say, you can't go to heaven because you're, of, you're not of this racial descent and so forth. Okay, um, They were to be a blessing unto the world. All right. But you can't be a blessing unto the world if you... The point is, we were chosen for this... The Israelites were chosen for this specific purpose. Now, had they apologized for God's calling upon their life and upon their nation, they would not be able to carry forth that, that uh, role as being a priest nation. They would forfeit that role out of guilt, like, oh, I so, feel so guilty that God chose me to do this. It's not fair to the other peoples. You know? And then that's what happens today. Then, then we have this lukewarm Christianity that develops, and then what happens is you got so-called Christians now trying not to take Christ off the throne over the nations. 
these so-called Christians against Christian nationalism. They're trying to remove Christ from being the king of the nations. This is a domino effect, if you see. We've seen it happen. Once we start apologizing for who we are, for what our, for what our divine calling is, then we stop doing it because it's not fair, and then, uh, then the whole thing crumbles from there. All right. Um, another example could be Exodus chapter 19. Well, Peter quoted from Exodus 19, verses 5 through 6, where it says, Now therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Now think about that. This is what the world is against today. Any nation, any people be, being a peculiar or a special people above all nations. Oh, how dare you say make America great again? What about China? What about all these other countries? Isn't that unfair to them? You know, All these statements are against what God teaches. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and, and now check this out, a holy church. No, he says a holy nation. That holy nation means a separate nation, a nation that is set aside for a specific purpose. Um, all right. And he says, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay. Exodus 19 verses 5 through 6. So we can't say these things today. Any talk of God having a chosen people appalls many Christians. They call you a racist, a white nationalist, a, a Christian nationalist, and on and on the list goes. Well, what do we do about Isaac then? Well, they're, they're, what they always try to do is they always try to divide the Old Testament from the New Testament. That's the Old Testament. Well, the problem is you're going to find this stuff all throughout the New Testament as well. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. You can turn there if you want. I'm going to read a few verses from there is one example where God still has a chosen bride of a specific tribe or tribes of people. Revelation 14 verse 1 says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having their father's name written in their foreheads. Verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and a voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders. Now check this out. And no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Now where, who are these hundred and forty four thousand? Well we, well, we know from Revelation chapter 7 that they were 12,000 from each tribe that were elected for a specific purpose, uh, especially in the last days. So th these were Israelites, is, is the point. These were a specific tribe of people that only they could sing this song. Okay? We do find out in Revelation chapter 7 that there were other huge groups of people before God's throne that were his servants as well, and they were of all the other nations of the world. The point being is God still has a central chosen nation. I believe that nation today is definitely America. And what we see happening in our country today with this vile hatred against uh, our founding fathers, against us, uh, against white people in general, is because Satan knows who we are. And his and he's and he sent his. Well, it said we read it in Revelation 12. The dragon chases the woman. It didn't say the dragon chased this multicultural uh, conglomerate of people. No, he said he chased the woman and her seed. Um. All right. Anyways. You know, now some people say, well, yeah, but Pastor Ben, that was uh, Israel of the Old Testament. Um. And America is not Israel, but what they've never, uh, uh, we could get into this. Whether or not we are the biological descendants of Israel really doesn't matter. I think, it, I, think it, I think we are. But what matters is recognizing where that birthright is. Who has the blessing to become a great nation? Who has the blessing to be the nation that controls the gates of its enemies? I mean, all those blessings of Abraham fit precisely with America. But I, but, but I have no doubt that, uh, well, I think they've just never heard of the Ten Lost Tribes. They've never studied the migrations of how they uh, went into Assyrian and Babylonian captivities, migrated north up over the Caucasus Mountains, were later called Caucasians, and then they spread throughout Europe, uh, 
and were converted to Christianity when the gospel came, and ever since they've been carrying forth that message.